Hello, and welcome to Possum Farms YouTube channel. Before we get into demonstrating how we are uh, going to unbox the MSZ 195 mower, I wanted to go over a couple of things. Number one, RTFM. Read the freaking manual. This this right here has all the useful information you need to set up your mower properly. Even if the translation isn't that good, it has useful information that you're going to need. So take the time, read through it. You know, actually pay attention to it. Look at all the little warnings. They got a lot of safety warnings, and they aren't kidding because this equipment can be dangerous to operate. So RTFM. Take it off first, go through it, look at it, read it, and then, then, go work on your mower and take it out of the crate. Now, something else I want to cover real quick, and I do want to make a big deal out of this. When you start working on these mowers, or any type of farm equipment, if you're going to go and attach it to the back of your tractor, and lift it up and crawl underneath it. Always, always, always use jack stands and a hydraulic jack, but never use a hydraulic jack by itself because they have a nasty habit of sliding out from underneath what you're working on, or the hydraulic will slowly bleed down when you're not paying attention and you can get in trouble real quick. Now, one tip here, never, ever, ever use cinder blocks. Wooden blocks are okay. You got to be careful how you stack them. But cinder blocks, never use them. The reason being is when they're put under high stress, they will crumble with no warning whatsoever. And you do not want to be underneath a 950 pound mower when a cinder block crumbles under the weight. So, just a few tips from an old park at Possum Farms. Enjoy the rest of the video. Like and subscribe. I'm going to start unboxing this today. This is going to be fun. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Houston, we got a problem here. We ran into a little bit of a problem last night when we went and hooked this up. The mount on the mower is taller than my eye hitch. And as you can tell, the hook on the eye hitch, both of these, it has two holes in this hook, and both of them are supposed to be bolted in. Unfortunately, the way this is situated, I can only get one of these to line up. And the top one, as you see here, is above the hitch. This isn't going to work. So I went and did some research on the internet last night, and there's an adapter plate that I can get that goes around this top link, and it goes straight back to this, totally bypassing this hook. And that supposedly will fix my problem. I ordered it from Amazon and I'm waiting for it to show up. 
Here's a slightly closer view of what I'm talking about. The main reason why I want two bolts going through this, as you, as you can tell, this isn't stable. It'll allow us to lift it and get it out of the crate, but I definitely don't want to operate it in the field like this. It, that's, that's, that's just not going to work. Oh well, I'm waiting on Amazon delivery. Now we're going to very carefully set it down on jack stands. You always, always, always want to use jack stands when you're uh, working underneath a heavy implement. Now we're going to start talk, taking off uh, nuts and loosening things up and setting it up for its first use. First thing I'm going to do is open the door so we see inside the mower a little bit better.
Now what we're doing is we're starting to adjust the roller on the back to lower it down a little bit. There's several holes for adjustment. We're going to go and put it on the lowest adjustment possible, making the mower as high as possible. As you can see, there's several adjustment points here. It was at the top one. We're going to lower it down to the lower one, which turns, which makes the roller go down, which actually lifts the mower. I'm going to loosen this one, and we took this one out already. Now we're about to do the other side. I'm going to take this bolt all the way out. And then we're going to loosen this one so that it swings down. And we're going to lower it with the hydraulic jack. You do not want to try to hold on to that roller with your hands because it's extremely heavy. Now we're loosening the pivot point for the roller in the front. It's on there tight. Need a cheater bar? Wow. Boy, that is on there tight. Get the cheater bar, put some more torque on it. There you go. Looks like it's moving now. Yeah. Okay. So it's loose? Yes. Okay. Okay, I want you on this end, yeah. and I want you to tell me when that uh, this hole lines up with the lower hole. The lower? The lowest hole. Step around over there and see my eyes. Coming down it looks like. Yep. Good. A little bit higher. done here is we've gone and lowered this roller down so it's going to be riding on the ground 
clear of all the blades. Now we're tightening up the bolts that adjust the roller. Now these have nylon nuts on them, nylock. Yeah. So they'll they'll lock. You want to make them tight, but you don't have to put a lot of torque on it. Now we're going to adjust the uh, shoes on both sides. We're going to lower them down to their lowest positions to uh, try out the mower width. I always start with the lowest position to raise the mower up the highest, just so you can see what it does before scalping the grass. We'll see how it works. Pop it loose. I'm not really sure. Yeah. Okay. You're going to take that bolt all the way out. Careful, that shoe's heavy. You want to smack your knee. And you want to go and put it back in the lowest position. No, we are on the lowest position. No, 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 on the highest position, oh, high. sorry. There you go. There you go. It's right there. And don't tighten it all the way up till you get the other one started. There you right. That will keep us from scalping the grass. We'll probably have to adjust it more for our preference as far as height, but you always want to start high first and then go lower. You don't want to start low and then go high. Good job. Yeah. You've adjusted this side. Now you get to go do the other side. Yep. Now while Thomas is adjusting the other side, I want to show you what this door looks like. Yeah. You open up this door, you get a good view of these hammers. That is a heavy duty hammer. 
that right there is going to eat some trees. I am very impressed with this design. Looks good. Looks tough. I think it'll last a long time. Now I have removed the manual. The manual was wrapped around here with some zip ties. Always read the manual before you start messing with this new piece of equipment. One thing to keep in mind that this is shipped dry, which means there's no oil and there's no grease. So all the grease fittings on here have to be pumped full of grease. This right here is the um, fill point for this. And this is the fill point for the gearbox. We'll be filling that up a little bit later. When this is shipped, the hoses are all tucked and tied down with zip ties so they won't get hurt. They've gone and given you a very handy little bracket right here to set those hoses on when it's not being used. Again, we've gone and set the shoe for the lowest position possible. Action. Okay, you got the backside steady? No. There. And now we have adjusted the feet. We're ready to move on to the next bit. Okay, today we're going to go and put oil in the drive line. We're going to put oil in the uh, gearbox. We're going to hook up the drive shaft. We're going to finish installing the guard and check the check the uh, uh, belt. And then we'll be ready to put this thing down on the ground and hook up the hydraulics and check it out. First, we're going to go ahead and install the front guard onto the front of the motor. On the front of the mower. Now we're going to go and put oil in the gearbox and oil in the drive shaft. The manual specified uh, 85 slash 140 weight. And I went to three different oil changing places, the auto parts store, and nobody had it. I went by the tractor dealership, 
they had a whole bunch of this stuff right there on the on the shelf where it ought to be. So when you're looking for 85 140, go to your tractor dealership. They'll probably have it in stock. Mine did. So here we go. This is going to fix my problem. This is a floating link adapter. Since this is a mower, it shouldn't have a rigid link like this hook. I found out from my local tractor dealer that just about all mowers need to have this. And this is so that the mower will flex a little bit when you go down into ditches or back up into an embankment. This will allow the mower to actually flex and give the or mount a little bit of a break. So we're going to install this now. Good job, Thomas. <laughs> Well, it's now on the tractor. We've got the drive shaft installed. We've got everything lubricated. I've still got a little bit of adjusting to do, but it's on the tractor and almost ready to go. Okay, we've finished the installation. We've gone ahead and gotten the drive shaft installed, and we went and put the flexible top link in. This was a lot of fun to install. Uh, had to go back and forth with some racket straps to get everything to line up, but once it lined up, we're good. And from now on, I leave this black piece on here. It's just flop over to the other side when I'm not using it, when I'm using the hook. So the only thing I've really got to mess with is the pin that attaches to the mower, and that's pretty easy. Now, one of the things that I wanted to make a point about is this three-point hitch. It wants to be, or needs to be, pretty level. Um, the reason why you want it pretty level is that makes the shoes on the bottom of the mower level with the dirt. That way it will go and hit clumps of dirt, it will skip over uh, logs and down uh, fence posts and stuff like this, and uh, the mower will work a lot better. Now we've gone and spent a bunch of time off camera adjusting this link so that the mower, which was sitting back like this, now it's more up like this. And the back roller is supporting all of the weight of the mower. And this is a little bit flexible, which will allow it to move. And uh, we're ready to go now. Everything's put together. Everything's looped up. We've got oil and everything. We've got our hydraulic lines hooked up. And it actually
actually goes side to side. We went and tested that to make sure that worked. So, uh, yeah, we're ready to go. The next video will be testing this out, and you'll get to see the mower in action. I can't wait to go munch some brush with this thing. Anyway, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Put your comments down there below. The more comments I get, the more likes I get, the more people will come and see me. Thanks for coming out to Possum Farm. Y'all come back now, you hear?